um, we keep seeing these um, headlines in newspapers regularly and in uh, television news also. So you have vanishing petroleum reserves, dwindling coal reserves, irresponsible sand mining, which we keep seeing a lot, whole hills, hillocks cut down into pieces of granite and used up, forests completely destroyed for using up timber. In order to mine, to get a whole bunch of minerals for us, we constantly come into conflict with tribals. Water problems between provinces, countries, we have huge uh, fights and there is even a projection that possibly the next world war will be over water. Food production into serious problems across the world. In large cities, we have a space problem. We have large number of people wanting to live and not enough space. And of course, you have heard a lot about uh, global warming, climate problems. All these problems are real. All these problems are not you know, just made up. They are real problems. But where are the solutions? That's what I want to talk about very briefly. And if you have to look out for solutions, where do you look out for these solutions? Are they simply social problems or are they beyond that? My premise and my idea that I'm presenting here is that by and large, these are engineering problems and we need to look out for solutions in the engineering space. First, let's take up this very, very basic core idea of water. Is water really a dwindling resource? Actually, my view is that it is not. Because water cannot be converted into anything else. It's, it can only be at best broken into hydrogen and oxygen. And when you combine that again, you're going to get water back. So water, unlike some of the other things that we can see, is not a dwindling resource. So what is it actually? It's, in my opinion, a management problem. And you shouldn't really be looking for complex engineering solutions to manage something which is, by and large, a management problem. We waste rainwater very consistently. And therefore, what we should really be doing is, can we come up with a solution to manage the rainwater? Can we manage the river water? So you cannot manufacture water otherwise. At best, there is a way in which you can convert seawater into uh, less saline or a pure drinking water. That's an engineering solution. But leaving that aside, by and large, water is primarily, in my opinion, a management problem. And what you should really be doing is to focus on managing that. So I'll skip that. Let's look at the next thing, energy. Is energy a dwindling resource? If you, if you see energy overall, what is it actually? In my opinion, again, we are seeing the problem wrongly. It's the fossil fuels which are dwindling resources, but not the energy itself. Take, for example, solar. There's massive amounts of energy as far as the Earth is concerned. It's, in fact, the Solar energy, which in some sense has been converted over time into fossil fuels, which we learned only about 140, 150 years back. And now we have come to a situation where we are recklessly, you know, abusing it. And we are reaching a stage where we may not have consistent supply of fossil fuels. But sun, it's going to be there for next few billion years at least. And that's, that's a, that's a long time. So, in my opinion, again, you shouldn't really look at energy as a dwindling resource, but rather start looking at it as, again, we are going after wrong things and we should be going after the right things. So what we really need, you know, if you are all engineers looking for solutions, is to go around trying to build probably some kind of a black box. I'm not trying to give you a solution of how it should be done, but perhaps the solution is a nice little box that stays at home, traps the solar energy for you, and provides you all your energy requirements and not really go after something 
which completely gets destroyed and cannot be recreated. Fossil fuels cannot be created again in any short time uh, space. It takes millions and millions of years to create that. And again, another thing that uh, a lot of people seem to think about of the large scale solutions of massive power plants that uh, uh, you know that will at best you know just just consider it massive power plant that's being commissioned recently can at best produce about 100 megawatts it's 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 nothing it's it's too small for the kind of power equipments that we have let's look at food as a problem what kind of a problem is food for a growing population food is a problem but then really think about where you have these large, massive growing populations. It's in only a few places. I mean, India and China certainly have huge population oriented problem. A lot of third world countries have this problem. But outside of that, in most countries, the population has stabilized. Food is not a problem there in those places. So over time, this will stabilize. And in my opinion, food is actually a minor problem. Population will stabilize, as I said and improved agricultural methods will happen. I mean, these are all inevitable. It has happened in other places, whether it is organic farming, whether it is uh, fertilizer oriented pro uh, you know, uh, uh, thing, whatever it is, end of the day, you, we will find easy solutions here and we should really be wasting our time. What is actually the real problem in my opinion is reckless consumption of materials elsewhere. For example, one particular area is this construction materials. Much more than energy, food and water, I see this as one of our major problems. For example, our almost reckless use of concrete, which in turn needs large quantities of cement and sand. And somehow it has come to the thinking in our circles that a building has to be made only of this. So look at all these things. These are all huge problems. Why do I see this as a huge problem? Because you take any of these source material, take sand, take granite, these things are created over millions of years through very complex processes, processes that no engineering or technology that we know of today can replicate. We cannot create, a, um, you know, uh, you know, something that is spewing lava, which then becomes igneous rock, which then gets ground into the sand, or these large granite, charconite, all these uh, rock, rocky hills that we see. We cannot create them. We have no way of actually creating them. Then are we actually right in using them recklessly? We shouldn't be. That's, that's basically part of my premise. I consider timber as perfectly okay. It's a material which even though, you know, when we say we create, you know, we don't create anything, but we can aid in creating that. For every tree that we cut down, it's possible for us to plant a tree. But for every slab of granite that we consume, can we create that? We cannot. So I think, you know, our construction idea should revolve a lot around timber. Bricks to a certain extent, because we really, you know, we, I don't know whether we can live in completely wooden houses. So brick. I think though it's, it's, you know, once you make a burnt brick, you cannot take it back into the sand from which it has been created. It is, a, it's somewhat okay to me. I mean, I, I you know, I, I'm saying this with a lot of trepidation. Um, you know, tomorrow we may have to uh, review our ideas. But look at all the other products that we have created around ourselves, which uses all kinds of metals and all kinds of plastics. And this is where we are going to get into serious problems. We don't have sources of this material in an unlimited sense. We must really minimize the usage of metal. Primarily from the point of view of avoiding conflicts with a whole bunch of tribal communities around. The recklessness with which the engineers have gone around using metals which has actually made large mining corporations and large building ideas which invariably use metal this is injurious to large number of people and we must look to really you know almost 
use all metals almost like gold sparingly plastics invariably created with fossil fuels as its uh, fundamental uh, underlying thing i think it should be completely avoided i don't know whether it is going to be easy everywhere we see it's primarily only plastics however we must try to find some solutions and when i say solutions there has to be some kind of alternates possible plant derived plastic key materials are very much possible today being used i think it should be extended let me just summarize i have come to the conclusion water food are not engineering problems personally this i have come to conclusion after doing reasonable studies no need to panic little bit of management more than enough energy material we need innovation we certainly need lot of work but not as much of worries in terms of energy more in terms of materials they are limited we should really control the use and that's all i have to say thank you